the winners, John and Lorraine Burns. Yesterday, when we ran out of time, they were competing with dress designer Lucille Rivers and zoo curator Carl Koffel for a salary of $500 a day on Who Do You Trust? And now, here's the star of our show, Johnny Carson. Welcome back. It's nice to have you with us again today. Yesterday, we didn't have time to uh, to break the tie. I think we just told you the category was sports, right? That's right. And Carl, you decided to go in? That's right. That's all right with you, Lucille? <laughs> Lucille, uh, <laughs> Lucille Rivers is a dressmaker, and uh, Carl, you're a uh, curator of reptiles at the Staten Island Zoo. Is that right? That's right. And you are competing with the Burnses who are coming back, who've already won, what, $2,000? $2,000. $2,000. They're going to try to make it $2,500. And he brought some baby pictures yesterday, right? That's right. Their new parents, their child is what, three months old? Three months old. And we would say, weren't you great with the grandfather uh, watching? Great, his great-grandmother has never Actually, seen a baby before. Actually, these are sensational pictures. If you'd like to take, can you get a close-up of these? These are beautiful. Did you take these, John? Uh, no, we didn't. Is that great? Yeah. How about a caption for this one? Uh, I think I'll stay here till the whole quiz show scandal blows over. Uh, would be one for that. Let's see. Uh, here's another one here. This is a great one. <laughs> Caption for this is, uh, and then I'll ask her to come up and see my etchings. <laughs> that could be nice. <laughs> These are great. Here's just one here. You see this one? Uh, she is saying he. He? He. He is saying easy on the soda, I think, on that one. <laughs> and here's one here. It looks like... Uh, Yikes, you mean that's the whole bathing suit? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think we got time for one more here. This is, look at this, Cree, this is great. Huh? <laughs> Caption for this one, one more drink and I think she'll go out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, those are lovely pictures. Thanks for bringing them back. Okay. Those are lovely pictures. Thanks for bringing them. The category is sports for $500. We will be back in one minute to break the tie. big question for $500. Uh, Carl, can you hear me all right? I can. All right, here's the question on sports. The Australian tennis ace, Ashley Cooper, won our national singles championship last week at Forest Hills. Within 10 seconds after I say go, name as many as you can of the last 20 men to win the top U.S. tennis crown, some more than once. That's the last 20 men to win the United States men's singles championship in amateur tennis. Just name as many as you can. Are you ready? Uh, you're speaking Greek as far as I'm concerned. Well, <laughs> give it a go and try to guess anyway. I can. Go ahead, you have no. 10 seconds if you want to make a guess at it. The, any men to win the U.S. Men's Singles Championship? I have the faintest idea. Not a tennis fan, no. Carl? <laughs> oh, I, I'm terribly sorry. Why? We'll be back in just a moment. Can we have the sound on over here? John, it's on sports. Here's the question. The Australian tennis ace, Ashley Cooper, won our national singles championship last week at Forest Hills. Within 10 seconds after I say go, name as many as you can of the last 20 men to win this top United States tennis crown, some more than once. That's the last 20 men to win the United States men's singles championship in amateur tennis. Are you ready? Yes. Go. Cooper, Anderson, Rosewall, Trabert, Stasis, Sedgman, Patty, Schroeder, uh, <laughs> Kramer, Prada, Parda, Petra. Okay, time is up. We don't have time to name all of them, but I think you named some of the top ones. Todd, who are some of the others? Uh, Ashley Cooper, Malcolm Anderson, Ken Rosewall, Tony Trabert, Victor Satius, Frank Sedgman, Arthur Larson, Richard Gonzalez, John Kramer, Frank Parker, and of course Donald Budge, Ellsworth Vines, and William Tilden, among others. Carl Caulfield, unfortunately, had none correct. John Burns had seven correct, so for $2,500, still chance, the Burns. <laughs>
Jack Berry had troubles. Uh, <laughs> something, uh, this is very, we've, we've had problems with the sound going off, but this is the first, what, uh, Mr. Stark, Todd? Instead of sending in some food and water, we thought maybe the, maybe the stagehands could come and really uh, help uh, them if out. If you don't mind the stagehands working while the show is on, gentlemen, would you try to uh, get the door open so we can let Mr. Mr. Burns is the winner, and that means you've won 20... Can you hear me, John? Yes, I can hear you've you. You've won $2,500, and you'll be back at the end of the show. We <laughs> <laughs> you can rest assured he'll be back at the end of the show. <laughs> and you'll be going for $3,000. So, uh, fellas, if you'd just like to wait off stage... And, fellas, uh, Carl, I'm sorry... You <laughs> right now... <laughs> It's time to drop dead. And uh, Todd, who's the... We'll have you out in a minute, John, I hope. <laughs> who's the first couple to try for the $500 today? Well, Johnny, <laughs> to start us off today, a uh, couple from New York City meet Pauline and Art Wexler. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Captive Guest. Huh? <laughs> We'll be the only show to be accused of holding a contestant captive during the course of the show. Well, how are we coming back there, all right? I hope this doesn't disturb our talking with you, Mr. and Mrs. Wexler, for a while. Uh, you, how long have you been married, Arnie? Married for about 10 years. About 10 years? Yes. You have a family? Yes, we have two children. Oh, good. We have a big girl, six and a half, ah. and a boy, four. All right, how did you meet uh, Pauline? I met her up in the mountains. Uh, up, in, uh, <laughs> up in vacation? Yes, I used to do sort of mountain climbing and uh, oh, is that right? stood at a hotel up there. <laughs> yeah, that sounds pretty good. It's kind of romantic. Does he still uh, climb mountains, Pauline? No, he doesn't do any of those romantic things anymore. No mountain climbing, no nothing. <laughs> Just past your peak, huh, Arthur? Huh? <laughs> Tell me this. Uh, did you start seeing Pauline after you got back to New York? Yeah, I started taking her to a theater. Her father was... Uh, her father was an usher and used to get us free tickets. <laughs> your father was an usher and used to get you free tickets? Her huh? father was. Her? Your father? Yes, my father was. Do you remember how he proposed? Mm -hmm. Yes, he was sitting in the theater when he proposed to me. In the theater? Yes, it was dark. Uh-huh. <laughs> Good old dad, yes. his theater tickets, huh? <laughs> now, did you accept the... Why don't you blast? <laughs> uh, did, you accept the, did you accept the proposal? Yes, he asked me to marry him. Oh. And he leaned over and kissed me, and I said yes. And then the whole world seemed to light up. It was like a ball of fire. It was probably your dad with the flashlight, I imagine. Yes. It was his theater. Huh? <laughs> How much later were you married, Pauline? Do you remember? Yes, eight months later. Eight months later? Where'd you yeah. go for honeymoon? Back up to the mountain? We went uh, to uh, Catskill Mountain Resort. Uh, yeah. Is that a good place for honeymoon? The very best. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting down now. <laughs> If you think it's bad now, wait till the air conditioner blows out. <laughs> uh, tell me this, uh, you were, uh, you, uh, you, how was the honeymoon up in the Catskills? You said it's a nice place to have a honeymoon. Terrific, terrific. Uh -huh. uh, for one thing, I hadn't met a fellow up there who was also on his honeymoon with his uh, wife. Lots of people go there, don't they? Yeah. And uh, both of us would have eating contests together, see. You'd have eating contests together? What do yeah. you mean? Well, uh, every breakfast, he would only eat 10 eggs, I would eat a dozen. Where was Pauline? Was she in on this contest, too? No, she generally stayed up, uh, didn't have breakfast. She yeah. stayed up in bed. Gee, you didn't know the fun you were missing, huh? How long did... Now, you ate a dozen eggs a day on your honeymoon. What'd you do for dinner? Well, for dinner, it was the other way around. He would beat me. <laughs> he would have four steaks. I could only eat three. I've never heard of this on your honeymoon. Didn't, didn't it kind of make you feel overstuffed? No, I used to work it off. Yeah, I was supposed <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they badminton games up there, and horseshoes and tennis. And <laughs> Wally, what would you what would you do if you won five hundred dollars? I take out some accident insurance for him. Hey, he's out, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Mr. Burns is out. You say you take out an accident insurance yes, policy? Yes, something's always happening to him. He's what do you mean? Getting into trouble. Are you one of these accident prone people? I'm one of these guys that's incident or accident prone. I'm always getting into trouble. The other day, I was on a subway train, yeah. and the woman accidentally buttoned my button onto her buttonhole, and she took me off the subway. It wasn't even my stop. <laughs> she took you off at her stop? <laughs> what, uh, what else? Nothing. <laughs> Earlier that week, also on a very crowded subway train, yeah. I got my hand caught in the lady's blouse. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> you were getting a hold of the wrong strap on the subway, weren't you? What do you mean? What else happened? 
Well, the other day I was walking with my wife in the street, yeah. and suddenly I disappeared. I had fallen into a manhole. <laughs> You got all kinds of problems. Anything else happened? Well, to the worst thing that happened to me is one day this so fellow... So what? They mean there's something worse? Yeah. <laughs> this fellow was uh, loading uh, some crates onto a truck, and I had offered him some assistance. Good. And after loading the truck and everything, anybody else would have been thanked. I was arrested. <laughs> what were you arrested for? The guy was stealing the stuff. <laughs> You've got enough troubles, Art, to be your own soap opera, you know? <laughs> I wish we had longer to talk with you. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, nice to have you with us. What would you do with $500 outside of buying the insurance policy? Anything else? Yes, well, we have some bills that I'd like to pay you off. Always do when you have yeah. children, don't you? Yeah. Nice to have you with us. <laughs> and in just a minute, we'll play Who Do You Trust? Go we'll away. <laughs> The uh, category, musicians. You want to trust yourself or trust Pauline? I'll trust myself. Harry James and Louis Armstrong have begun famous for their playing of a musical instrument. What common instrument do they play? The trumpet. Trumpet is right. Come on. All right, how about uh, current events? Current events. I'll trust myself. All right, the new Miss America is Mary Ann Mobley. What state did she represent in the pageant? Jackson, Mississippi. Mississippi, right. How about United States presidents, U.S. presidents? Stay with yourself? I'll stick with Who was the only president of the United States to be tried on impeachment charges? Who's the only president to be tried on impeachment charges? Remember that in school at all? For a little while, huh? That was Andrew Johnson. Andrew Johnson. Well, look, you did fine anyway. You wound up with $50. Art, I hope you get out of the studio all right. Huh? Well, thank you so much. Okay, John. Here's all you do to guest on our show. If you live in the New York area or plan a trip our way, simply write a letter telling about yourself to Trust. ABC TV, New York, 23 New York. That letter might earn you $500 a day. We'll be right back after station identification for that time for Who do you trust? Welcome again to Who Do You Trust? And now back to Johnny Carson. Thank you. Thank you, and welcome to Inner Sanctum, the, sque <laughs> the squeaking door. Todd, who's, uh, who's first today, second today? Well, two sisters. Let's bring anybody on. <laughs> two sisters, say hello to Sylvia Kaufman of Flushing and Nikki Hirschsprung of the Bronx. Oh, welcome down. <laughs> Both sisters, huh? Yes. From the Bronx. Which one's Nikki? I'm Nikki. And You're Nikki. Sylvia. You're Sylvia, huh? Yes. What, uh, what was your maiden name, gals? My maiden name was Hirschsprung. Boy, was I glad to change that. <laughs> Hirschsprung? Hirschsprung, that's right. That is kind of unusual, isn't it? Well, it is an unusual name. It's a name uh, of a disease of the lower colon called Hirschsprung's disease. <laughs> you were named after a disease? Is that right, really? I mean, is, is a name like that any handicap at all, uh, Sylvia? Well, it was a handicap, even when people didn't know what it meant. Uh -huh. But when I came to New York, it became a decided asset. Well, what do you mean? Uh, well, our first apartment in New York was around the corner from Long Island College of Medicine. <laughs> and <laughs> the medical students used to go through the medical textbooks, yeah. and when they studied the stomach, invariably they'd come across Hirschsprung's disease. <laughs> and they'd remember me, <laughs> and they'd call me up and ask me out for a date. Did you, uh, <laughs> did you go out with them? Indeed, I did. As a matter of fact, I bet I went through the whole college that way. Apparently, you were catching. <laughs> I guess. I didn't go out. Sylvia, where are you gals from? We're from Columbus, Ohio. Huh? You sound as though you've been having a lot, of, a lot of fun here in New York, though, huh? Oh, we had a marvelous time here in New York, but I think uh, we've had even more interesting fun in Europe. Did you uh, take a trip to Europe? Yes, we did. My sister and I went to Europe, and I think we really had a ball. Aye, that sounds <laughs> fascinating. I've always wanted to do that. What would you say was the highlight of your trip that you gals took to Europe? Well, the highlight of my trip was a bullfight I saw in Spain. Do you like bullfights? Are bullfights really as interesting as they say they are? Well, for me, they were that interesting. I was sitting up in the front row at a bullfight, uh, and I was very busy taking pictures with my movie camera. And the bull jumped the railing and came toward the people in my section. And everybody... <laughs> Everybody around me ran like blazes, but I stood my ground. I was so busy taking pictures that I don't think I realized what I was doing. I even moved in closer to take a better picture of the bull. Good heavens. And they got I got a case of Hirschsprung right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, well, what happened anyway? Well, they got the bull back in the arena, and later the matador awarded me the bull's ear. 
Why, why did he give you the bull's ear? Is that the... Well, it's supposed to have some kind of symbolic meaning. Yeah. Maybe he wanted to hear from you or something like that. Vicki, <laughs> yeah. how about you now? Did you come back with some exciting uh, souvenirs? Uh... Oh, I came home with my husband. I think that's a wonderful souvenir. Is that right? Yes, I met Whereabouts him. now in Fran or Europe? France, was it? Yes, I met him in France. Ah, is he a Frenchman? No, as a matter of fact, he was an American boy. He was touring Europe. Now, that's just kind of romantic. Two American tourists uh, meet and fall in love in, the, where was it, in Paris someplace? Yes, it was. That's certainly kind of romantic. Now, where'd you meet? In one of those little <laughs> left bank cafes or at the Champs Elysees or something like that? Uh, well, not quite. As a matter of fact, I met him on a boat trip in the Paris sewers. <laughs> you met him on a boat trip through the Paris sewers? It's kind of like the Tunnel of Love, though. No, what do you mean? What, <laughs> what kind of a trip was this? The, through the, well, you go through the sewers. Uh, well, it's one of the tourist attractions in Paris. It's, uh, these are the sewers that they write about in stories like The Count of Monte Cristo and Les Miserables. And they uh, take you through them on tours two days a week. Good heavens. Did anybody water ski down there or anything like that? <laughs> well, what, what kind of boat, boat was it? It was a rather large boat, but there were only five of us in it at the time. Well, is, it, is it a motor boat or what? No, as a matter of fact, they rode it. It's probably one of the rules down there, don't make any waves, huh? <laughs> how, did, how did you uh, happen to get talking to your husband, anyway? I he overheard my sister and I talking and knew we were Americans and began to talk to us, and before I knew it, he had my name and my phone number and a date with me for that evening. Yeah, that's pretty fat. Did you get to see much of him now while you were in Paris? No, not too much. I saw him in the sewer, and then I saw him that evening. <laughs> <laughs> And the next time was uh, back home in our apartment in Long Island. You met him in your apartment in Long Island? Yes. Huh? Uh, well, where, I mean, where's Boston's on Long Island? In Flushing. <laughs> <laughs> where else? <laughs> where else would it be? Gee, that's kind of your song, isn't it? Uh -huh. <laughs> Vicki, how long have you been married? About two and a half years. Do you have a family? No, not yet, but I hope to have a large one. Ah, good. How many? Three, four, five? Four or five, maybe. Possible. How about you, Sylvia? Do you have uh, children? I already have one son, Michael. Hi, Mike. Hi, how, how's Mike? Oh, he's 15 months old 15 now. 15 months, huh? Yes. What would you gals do if you want 500 uh, bucks today? I'd sort of like to dabble in the stock market, I think. I've always uh -huh. wanted to, but I felt that uh, I hate to risk my own money. With quiz money, it wouldn't be so much of a risk, I don't think, <laughs> if I lost. I guess they say if you, you can go ahead and, and take a chance investing in the stocks as long as it's not something that you want to keep, huh? <laughs> Do you, you have any plans at all? What you would do outside if you got your 15-month-old son, right? Well, I Mike? think I'd hold some of my money so I can keep her out of the poorhouse. <laughs> you guys have any hobbies at all? Anything you do in your spare time? I skin dive. Really? Yes. Are you a skin diver? Yes. With a mask and the, and yes. the snorkels? I had a fascinating experience. Tell us about it. What happened? Uh, well, we were down in Martinique uh, in a little harbor called Ansmatan, and there was a sunken submarine in the harbor, and both my husband and I swam down to investigate it. We how deep, how deep was this now? Well, the harbor is a very shallow harbor. I'm not very good at estimating, but I'd say it was about 30, 40 feet. Wow. Uh, we never did see any bodies, but we kept looking. Did you explore the submarine? <laughs> yes, we did. What's the trick in skin diving? Is it difficult to learn to do? Well, as far as I'm concerned, you have to be able to hold your breath. My husband cheats a little, but he uses those big tanks on his back, so... Uh... You mean you go a cappella without the tanks? Yes, I don't stay down very long, of course. How about you? Do you have any hobbies at all? Uh, nothing as exciting as skin diving, no. I like to ride and play tennis. Sounds like you guys have had a very interesting life all together. <laughs> I think we have. Coming home with a husband from the sewers. <laughs> <laughs> any girl that brings home a husband from the sewers can't be all bad. Huh? <laughs> We're very happy you could be with us on the show today. Well, it's lots and of fun and, uh, being here, John. In just a moment, we'll play Who Do You Trust, and uh, we'll let you decide who's going to answer the questions, all right? All right. We'll be Thanks. back in one minute to play the game. Okay, gal. Which one of you wants to decide who's going to trust who? Well, I think I'll be the captain. Oh, you want to be the captain? Yes, Johnny. All right. The category is musicians. Musicians. Now, you can either answer or you can trust Sylvia, either way. Well, I'll try trusting myself. <laughs> okay. With what musical instrument did both Artie Shaw and Benny Goodman win their greatest fame? And if you miss this one, we'll... Artie Shaw, Benny Goodman. What's their uh, what the instrument? Trombone, I believe. Oh. You know that's it's a clarinet. clarinet. <laughs> you're, thinking of, you're thinking of the Dorsey brothers. Well, look, let's try current events. Current events. Now, for double, who do you trust? Oh, uh, well, I think I'll trust Sylvia. You're going to toss it to her yes. now, huh? In the state which holds the first major elections of the year, Governor Edmund Muskie was elected senator yesterday. In what state? Maine. Maine is right. <laughs> now, United States presidents, who do you trust to double the dough? I think I'll trust Sylvia again. <laughs> 
Calvin Coolidge succeeded to the presidency upon the death of the 29th president of the United States. Name the man. Harding. Warren G. Harding is right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Todd? We have a tie, Johnny. The sisters Sylvia, Nikki, and the Wexler. Okay, uh, Nikki, since you're the captain of the team, would you step up uh, over to the board here where your name is? And uh, we'll have the playoff with Mr. Wexler here. Here is the question. Write your answer on the board. The winning answer, uh, you and your partner will come back to compete for the $500. Here's the question. A great world statesman is Sir Winston Churchill. In what year was he born? In what year was Churchill born? All right, time's up. We have 1872 and 1878. That means that Mr. Wexler is the winner. The year was 1874. So we'll see you and uh, your wife in just a moment. Nikki, thank you so much. And here we go see with you. another big $500 question. And returning to try to keep their $2,500 winnings building, we're happy to say by earning again that salary of $500 a day, poll taker John Burns and his wife Lorraine. You've had an experience that very few people have uh, on a television show. I don't I'm think sure I've seen I anybody get <laughs> inadvertently locked in a uh, in a booth before. Now, wh what was your reaction when the door jammed on? Well, you? I well, I finally began thinking Lorraine might end up a pretty rich widow. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're glad you make it back to the finish of the show today. Understand you had a little uh, request from your brother. Uh, That's right. Like that? He wants me to say two words: Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Why is that? You got to, uh, <laughs> Everybody's here, huh? Why is that? Well, the other day you asked uh, Lorraine where we had come from, and she said I'd come from Fort Worth, and that's where I was born. Uh -huh. But uh, I was raised in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and that's where my little brothers live. Okay, you ready to try for $3,000 now? Okay, okay, Todd, the category, and the Wexlers, the returning winners. That's right, right John. Welcome back. Pauline, Arthur. <laughs> the category today, gentlemen, for $500 is ranks and titles. Ranks and titles. You want to trust yourself, uh, Arthur, or trust Pauline? I'll trust, trust myself. Him. Trust him, yeah. huh? All right, John, how about you? Well, after that experience, <laughs> I think it's Lorraine's turn. You're going you're gonna to tru <laughs> trust Lorraine? I think I will. Okay, we'll be back in one minute to play Who Do You Trust? Ranks and Titles for $500. <laughs> Can you hear me all right? Right. Here's the question. In the peacetime Navy of the United States, there are 10 ranks of commissioned officers. Within 10 seconds after I say go, name as many as you can of the 10 ranks of Navy officers, officers commissioned by the President. That's in the peacetime Navy. Do you understand the question? The I 10 ranks so. of the officers. Are you ready? Go. Admiral, uh, Captain, uh, Seaman First Class, Seaman Second Class, Seaman Third Class, uh, Okay, we'll be back to you in a second. Can we have the sound on over here? Lorraine, here's the question. Can you hear me all right? Yes, Johnny. In the peacetime Navy of the United States, there are 10 ranks of commissioned officers. Within 10 seconds after I say go, name as many as you can of the 10 ranks of naval officers commissioned by the President in the peacetime Navy. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Ready? Go. Admiral, Vice Admiral, Rear Ad Admiral, uh, Commander, uh, Lieutenant, Captain, uh, all right, Todd, what are the 10 ranks of naval officers in the peacetime Navy? Johnny, they're Ensign, Lieutenant J.G., Lieutenant, Lieutenant Commander, Commander, Captain, Rear Admiral, Vice Admiral, Admiral, and Fleet Admiral. Art Wexler had two correct. Lorraine Burns had six correct for $3,000. Still jammed, the Burns. Well, you know your Admiral, huh? Arthur? Sorry, didn't do a little better. It's all right. Yeah, just going in there, and we're glad we got you out of the uh, out of the I room this time. <laughs> <laughs> it was a real pleasure having you with us, Pauline well, and Arthur. You wound up with what uh, 50 fifty dollars today? Well, good. We hope you enjoy it, and uh, thanks do. for being with us. You uh, and John will be back with us tomorrow. Yes, You'll be going for three thousand five hundred dollars, and we'll get the door fixed. All right. It's a good idea. <laughs> thanks for being with us, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow at the same time. And who do you trust? Bye now.